right, so horizontal or slant asymptote, what are we looking at here? Is it a slant? Is it a slant? No. Horizontal, okay. What is the degree of the numerator? A little bit of a trick question here. It's actually zero <clears throat> because there's no variable. Okay, if there's no variable, then it's degree zero because anything to the zero power is one, so technically you could, you could write it like that. Um, so the denominator has a greater degree. So what does that mean in terms of horizontal asymptotes? Y equals zero. Very good. Y equals zero because the bottom is way bigger than the top is. So you're dividing by a really big number. That means you're headed towards zero. <clears throat> Are we going to have a hole? No. Because the numerator doesn't factor. Um, and the denominator does, but it, it doesn't have anything in common <coughs> Excuse me, with the numerator. So vertical asymptote, we said the simplified denominator equal to 0. Well, the denominator didn't get simplified. Uh, I am going to factor it here. So we actually have two vertical asymptotes. We've got one at 0, because it has a GCF of x, so x equals 0. And we also have one at positive 3, because it factors into x times x minus 3. So 0 and positive 3. X-intercept. We set the numerator equal to 0. Well, the numerator is negative 4. Does negative 4 equal 0? No. We have no <coughs> x-intercept. That happens sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. Y-intercept. Well, if we try and plug 0 in for x, what's going to happen? We're gonna, yeah, we're going to divide by 0, which is undefined. Well, the reason why is because 0 is a vertical asymptote. So we don't have a y-intercept either because we can't touch or cross a vertical asymptote. <clears throat> Do you not try negative 3? What do you mean try negative 3? Negative one side. I don't know. You're good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these things on my graph so I know what kind of extra points I need to pick. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, I picked extra bold lines here because uh, our horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. So if that's the case, you just need to, uh, your x-axis is going to be there. You just need to kind of make a bold dashed line so that I can see that that's what your horizontal asymptote is. Same thing if you have a vertical asymptote of x equals 0. That is the y-axis. So just go over the, the y-axis in a bold dashed line. And then we also have one at positive 3. And that's it. We don't have any points on our graph because we didn't have any holes. We can't have any intercepts because those are our uh, asymptotes. So we're just going to have to pick some points here. Okay, We're going to have to pick some points. Um, we need, I would say we probably need about six points in this case. Uh, we need two to the left. Of our first vertical asymptote, we need two in between our asymptotes, and we need two to the right of our asymptote on the right side. Um, there's no magic uh, process to picking these. I'm just going to say, um, I'll pick like negative five. Mm. Negative 2 sounds good. 1, 2, 3, let's go with 4 and 7, just to keep things interesting. Okay. Again, you could individually go in and plug in all these numbers, but the most efficient way is to put that equation into your y equals and get them off the tape. Okay, the numerator is just a single number, so we don't have to put it in parentheses here. 
Make sure that the denominator is in parentheses. Go to your table. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to jump in between the two. All right. Negative 5 is negative 0.1. Negative 2 is negative 0.4. There's our vertical asymptote at 0. 1 is 2. 2 is 2. There's our vertical asymptote at 3. 4 is negative 1. And 7 is negative 0.143. Oops. Yes. Bold and dashed. Okay, so let's plot those points. One, two, three, four, five. Negative point one. Negative two. Negative four. One, two, two, two. Four, negative one. Um, I could, I mean, while I've got the table up here, I can put in a little bit more detail. <clears throat> uh, I can do negative 1 as well. Negative 1 is negative 1. And I put 1 and 2. Um, I'm a little, little concerned about what's going on in between the two vertical asymptotes because both of those equal 2. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at the graph and see what I'm looking at there. Um, so it's almost like there's a parabola there in the middle. So I'm going to use that uh, calculate uh, function again and I'm going to check uh, 1.5 just to add a little bit more detail to my graph. So it gives me a little bit more of that parabola there. And then I can just sketch in the rest of my functions. Okay, Approach the horizontal asymptote Approach the vertical asymptote. We've got kind of a parabola there in the middle. Okay, again, get close to those vertical asymptotes. It's really hard to draw on here, so please forgive my <laughs> wavy lines. Yeah, a little bit. What was the y coordinate for seven? Uh, for seven, negative one point, or excuse me, negative point one four three. Okay. <clears throat> so the big picture is your asymptotes need to be accurate, intercepts need to be accurate, um, your extra points need to be accurate, and then from there you just approach your asymptotes when you're sketching the rest of the graph. Okay. Let's look at one more that has a slant asymptote because we haven't done that yet with the sketching today. Okay, so the next one's going to have a slant asymptote. Now I'm going to let you practice. Okay, so here's our next function. x cubed minus 9x over 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. See, that second example took half the time the first one did. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right. So, as always, start with looking at horizontal asymptote. The numerator is greater than the denominator, so we don't have a horizontal asymptote, and it is exactly one degree greater, so we know we're going to have a slant asymptote. So let's go ahead and get that long division out of the way. <clears throat> so here we go. 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 into x cubed, missing the x squared, so put you a placeholder there, minus 9x, and we're missing a constant term, so put you a placeholder on the end. <clears throat> All right, x cubed divided by 3x squared. We've got another fraction, but it'll be okay. So we've got one-third 
and x cubed divided by x squared is x. Multiply. The good news is when we multiply, we don't have fractions because all those numbers are divisible by 3. Okay, so when we multiply them all by 1 third x, we get x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x. Be careful with this. 0 minus a negative 2 is positive 2x squared. Negative 9 minus a negative 3 is negative 6x. So 2x squared divided by 3x squared is 2 thirds. The long division is not finished, but that's all we need for our slant asymptote. Stick a y equals in front of it and you're good. <clears throat> okay, let's see if we've got a hole. We need a factor. The numerator has a GCF of x. So we'll start with that. The denominator has a GCF of 3. The numerator is the difference of perfect squares. So that's x plus 3 times x minus 3. The denominator would be x minus 3 times x plus 1. So we have common factor of x minus 3. So that means we have a whole at positive 3. So plug that into the simplified version to get the y-coordinate. And then go ahead and cancel those 3's right there. 6 over 4. So that's 3 over 2. So we have a whole at the point positive 3, positive 3 over 2. Okay, vertical asymptote. What's left in the denominator we set equal to 0 and solve. So we have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. <clears throat> X-intercept, we take our simplified numerator and set it equal to 0. Well, we have two pieces in the simplified numerator. We have x and we have x plus 3. So here's an example of where we have two x-intercepts. 0, 0, and negative 3, 0. Y-intercept, we plug 0 in. You can do it in either version. Uh, if we do it in the original, we get 0 on the top and we get negative 9 on the bottom, that's okay. We can divide 0 by another number, but we get 0. Uh, guess what? If your x-intercept is 0, 0, your y-intercept is 0, 0, because if you're, you're on the origin, you're on both axes at the same time. Um, so technically, our x one of our x-intercepts is the same as the y-intercept. Okay, um, let's go ahead and put that on our graph so we can figure out what points we need to pick. Okay, slant asymptote, do the best you can. Okay, y-intercept of two-thirds, slope of one-third. I know that's not the easiest thing in the world to graph, but we can make it work. The y, uh, of which part? The overall? I plug it into the original. I plug in zero, yes. Plug in zero to the original mm -hmm. for x. You could also do it into the simplified version. You're, you're still going to get zero over three in that case, but it's still going to be zero. This was just a really weird example because it was zero. Okay, there's my slant asymptote. I have a hole at three. 3 halves, which is below the slant asymptote. Okay, the hole is just below the slant asymptote. Vertical asymptote at negative 1. X-intercept, we have two of them.